Hello there and welcome to Take Over, the show that discusses all things technology. We are coming to you from Shanghai, China, the Far East, and this is where the Mobile World Congress is happening. 2024 conference is happening right here. If you do not know, Mobile World Congress is basically the congress that brings together all tech players from software to hardware guys, everyone who is in tech meets in Mobile World Congress. And that's where we are at today to bring you the scoop courtesy of Huawei. Huawei have been gracious to us to bring you this show up front, this gigs. But first off, as we always do it, the tech news of the week and majority of it will be based off of the Mobile World Congress 2024 from Shanghai, China. This week, Tech News comes to you from the Mobile World Congress 2024 in Shanghai, China. As the world advances the adoption of 5G technology, telecommunications companies have been urged to leverage the immense opportunity presented by artificial intelligence AI in the sidelines of the just-completed Mobile World Congress 2024 in Shanghai, China. Tech leaders who were meeting at the global event reiterated the application of this AI in telecommunications in accelerating higher level autonomy and boost to network productivity. Normally happening in Barcelona, Spain, Mobile World Congress MWC is a global tech event that brings together techies across different tech disciplines from software, hardware to distribution, cybersecurity and even the media. 2024 marks the first year of the official deployment of commercial 5.5G and F5.5G gigabyte optical network, basically faster versions of the current 5G internet technology. Synergies across networks, cloud and intelligence are set to give rise to pervasive intelligent applications and increasingly diverse user experience. Together with global operators, industry professionals and opinion leaders, Huawei's board member and president of ICT products and solutions, Yang Chaobing, encouraged this AI adoption in telecommunications networks. In his speech entitled AI for Networks, Powering Productivity, Yang said the telecommunications industry has kicked off 5GA while generative AI has achieved major breakthroughs. AI as a foundational technology for network automation is set to accelerate the industry's transition towards higher level network autonomy and play a key role in 5GA business success. Yang also noted that generative AI is transforming information production, processing transfer and exchange to create mobile AI opportunities and boost traffic connections and services. This also means higher requirement for differentiated service experiences, monetization and automated network O&M. The G stands for generation, meaning 5G is the most current generation of cell phone network technology. 5.5G is a name given to 5G advanced 5GA networks, which fall within the 5G standard but deliver significant speed enhancements. 5.5G advanced offers a massive speed boost with a potential of up to 10 gigabytes per second download link and 1 gigabyte per second uplink speeds. Tech savvy readers might remember a similar step forward with 4G. As the debate on the adoption of 5.5G rages on, countries are already gearing up for the uptake and adoption of 6G technology in the next three years, as was revealed in the Shanghai meeting. Currently, no countries have adopted it yet. Nonetheless, numerous nations are actively allocating resources towards research and development, aiming to pioneer this revolutionary technology. China stands at the forefront of this competition. Operators around the world are rolling out increasingly diverse data plans that feature high-speed experience promoting monetization based on the business models that are less centered on data traffic and more focused on speed. Enhanced uplink performance and reduced latency are playing a key role in these new network monetization strategies. Thanks to upgrades in ultra-reliable low-latency communications or what are known as URLLC technologies, 5G is increasingly cost-effective, enabling application in more core production processes. This reduced capacity or red cap and passive IoT ecosystem is maturing at an accelerating pace to expand connections to all scenarios. 80% of 5G operators have turned to TDD large bandwidth to deliver 
gigabytes per second, which has supported growth in the multi-band ecosystem. 35% of operators have TDD spectrum in more than two bands, while mainstream devices are almost all now multi-carrier capable. As AI continues to capture human imagination and as other new technologies come to be more widely implemented, high-speed connectivity in the form of 5G and 5.5G is needed to provide the significant bandwidth, low latency and robust connections needed for computer-intensive processes. This also applies to other technologies such as edge computing, cybersecurity and IoT, all of which rely on strong connectivity. Though companies themselves will not be responsible for investing in 5G and 5.5G, their changing demands can and will influence telcos' strategies towards upgrading their network, infrastructure and offerings. According to the GSMA, 5G technology addresses three main use cases, creating ultra-reliable, low-latency connections, enhancing the mobile internet and enabling machine-to-machine -machine communication and its influence would be felt in every sector. Fundamental to the growth of digital economy will be the continued development of broadband and fiber networks, especially 5G and 5.5G. 5G technologies are already having a strong impact on the economies where they are present, changing market dynamics by bolstering speed and network abilities. In the meantime, devices, content, experiences and business models are diversifying as more operators embrace 5G, illustrating a market shift from risk-based to benefit-based decision-making to increase the likelihood of business success. Since its rollout in the several economies, the 5G services market has grown to a value of 48 billion US dollars as of 2022, with some expectations that it will reach 3.8 trillion US dollars by 2032. And that's our tech news of the week. Very well then, now you're up to speed with what's been happening. Let's give you the scoop of this week's conversation. And this is what we will be speaking about. The cost of data and internet bundles compared to other developed markets has been a major conversation point in the Kenyan tech space. However, key elements in determining retail cost of airtime, data and Wi-Fi would be the tech infrastructure reach across the country. Here's why it is important. Majority of Kenya's population lives in the rural areas, making them a key target market for affordable internet. The Communications Authority of Kenya a week ago just reported that Kenyans had dumped over 600,000 feature phone units, further escalating the demand for internet services by those opting for smartphones. So let me use the concept of supply and demand to make sense of what I'm trying to explain here. If you have a large supply of fiber optic cables, that means many people are reached and automatically that drives the cost of internet down. Internet speed as part of infrastructure has a profound impact on a country's economic and social development. Basically, a wider reach of fiber optic cables that supply Wi-Fi to homes, businesses and government offices, no matter how far flung they may be, improves speeds, lowers costs and ultimately promotes digital inclusivity. China, through the Belt and Road Initiative, began a mandatory drive to increase the connectivity by insisting that each construction, house, roads and overpasses, skyscrapers and other infrastructure must have fiber optic cables running through its electrical connections. It even became a key qualification feature for projects to kick off in the populous country. Within the building codes, and they did this almost 15 years ago, um, they made a regulation that every new building has to be connected by fiber. Uh, and that's pretty insightful because if you look at the cost of deploying a fiber network, 90% of the cost is civil engineering, digging up the road and laying a conduit. In the shell and coal? Huh? Don't just put in the shell and shovels and pipes. Okay. okay? The fiber itself and the routers that go on each side of it, we have one tenth of the cost. Okay. So during new construction, that cost is just the cost of that pipe. Mm -hmm. So if you have a regulation that requires uh, the fiber to be deployed as new construction, you have driven down the cost of fiber deployments by now. Oh, no, no. And virtually no countries have recognized this other than China. Um, it is 
the absolute golden path for ubiquitous fiber coverage. Every new construction will have super fast data access. The advantage of this policy is that it's a one-off installation compared to laying Ethernet cables that have to be changed all so often as technology evolves. With Ethernet cabling, the changes normally happen due to bandwidth limitations of 100 megabytes per second. Fiber, on the other side, can host hundreds of terabytes of data bandwidth. What China did was actually very smart um, in that the spectrum was uh, allocated um, not for upfront money, but upfront conditions. You can have this spectrum, but you must deploy it to cover a certain pop percentage of the population within three years. If you don't, you lose it. Um, the fees for the spectrum uh, were delayed by about three to five years. So you only started paying fees for that spectrum as the income started coming in. The BRI was created in response to China's industrial overcapacity, low domestic demand stagnating exports abroad, and the need to increase connectivity with developing economies for expanding to new foreign markets. By 2027, total global BRI spending could reach 1.3 trillion US dollars. Other economic forecasts predict that 2,600 projects worldwide valued at $3.7 trillion. These initiatives allow the internationalization of Chinese priorities and alignment with its long-term strategic interests. As such, the BRI is Beijing's most important political and economic instrument. Beijing is also using the BRI as a new multilateral cooperation platform alongside the G20, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, and others. Drive down the cost of broadband, prioritize the deployment of high-speed networks, and open up your market uh, to be able to import this technology so it can be available to entrepreneurs. And when you do that, you're going to give uh, the people in your country the tools they need to solve the problems you have. Kenya and South Africa have the most advanced mobile infrastructure and lots of internet users. In this country, a gigabyte of broadband data is cheaper than the global average. Similarly, Sudan has a population of 45 million and 13 million of them use the internet, paying the lowest prices on African continent. Internet users in Sudan pay just 0.90 dollars per gigabyte. This is followed by Egypt where users pay 1.30 US dollars. Prices are generally lower in East Africa and West Africa compared to Central and Southern Africa. The presence of fiber optic cable landing stations along the African coastlines give these countries more direct access to the world's wide fiber grid. Seacom's subsea cables wrap around the African continent and stretch inland to form an expansive terrestrial network. According to Seacom, once again, in Kenya, internet users paid on average 2.25 US dollars for a gigabyte of data in 2021. Kenya ranks 118 out of 230 countries of the price of mobile data. Not everyone pays the same for data in Kenya, with prices ranging from $0.26 all the way up to $10.93 US dollars for a gigabyte. In Uganda, there is a wide range of data costs. One gigabyte can cost between $0.45 US dollars and $22.71 US dollars. These figures show that there is a big discrepancy in the cost of internet, even within individual countries. The heavy reliance on mobile data and lack of sufficient infrastructure are two of the main causes of expensive internet in Africa. Small populations have to pay more because there isn't enough demand to stimulate competition. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, one gigabyte costs residents 20.6% of their average monthly income. In 2020, there was 20% drop in prices as the government's digital development strategy started to take effect. Prices, however, remain high and are unlikely to drop anytime soon. Small populations mean a small customer base and that doesn't make DRC a popular choice for investment in infrastructure. Installing and maintaining networks in remote, poor and underpopulated regions doesn't easily attract investment from telecom operators. In general, internet speed 
as part of infrastructure plays an important role in promoting the country's overall development. It not only improves people's productivity and efficiency, but also provides people with more opportunity and convenience. Therefore, national investment and policy formulation in developing internet infrastructure are crucial. I think that's a fair point now to take a short break. We will be back with more. Don't go too far. Time now for our startup of the week. So here then is our founder this week. In 2022, Kenyans that had their credit data visible with the Credit Reference Bureau CRBs rose to 25 million, made up of 19 million active records, while the 6 million individuals were visible but do not have any credit facilities. Credit reference firm TransUnion reported at the time, Kenyans that were eligible for credit and are over 18 years old are about 30 million. So we have about 5 million Kenyans that are not credit visible within the bureaus. There were 19 million and 25 million bracket or about 6 million Kenyans that were underserved, those that are visible but do not have any credit facilities. Managing such kind of data can be hectic considering the granular information that needs to get into reasons for accessing financing. Which is why the team at Artificial Intelligence Center of Excellence Africa, AICE Africa, used artificial intelligence to fuse credit scoring. Casper uses a series of AI algorithms that utilize most uh, data uh, points that are not utilized by other credit scoring uh, tools. And also the methods begin from first data cleaning and then also identifying the specific data points that are essential for, for scoring credit. And one, Casper is very dynamic. Casper changes over time because it's been reinforced with AI algorithms that make it very, very dynamic uh, for credit scoring. Mm -hmm. That way we increase efficiency, we increase accuracy, and we increase also accessibility of people to access credit. AI credit score or artificial intelligence credit scoring is a modern approach to accessing a borrower's credit worthiness. Now, unlike traditional credit scoring, which relies on static variables and historical data, AI credit scoring uses machine learning algorithms to analyze a wide range of data points, including non-traditional data to predict a borrower's likelihood of repaying a loan. The AI score meaning, therefore, represents a more comprehensive and dynamic assessment of credit risk, proving lenders with a more accurate and nuanced understanding of a borrower's financial behavior. AI-based credit scoring revolutionizes the traditional credit assessment process by leveraging advanced machine learning algorithms to analyze a vast array of data points, far beyond what traditional scoring systems consider. This approach enables a more dynamic, comprehensive, and accurate evaluation of a borrower's credit worthiness. Casper's business model is B2B currently, even as plans are underway to mainstream it and make it accessible to the mass market. The strategy, Wafula says, is a piggyback of the existing data available by the existing creditors to foster this artificial intelligence backed referencing. We've been, we've been working on the product for the last two and a half years, mm -hmm. uh, but we've been doing research for the last five years mm -hmm. uh, on the financial sector in Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, so, one, to solve problems uh, within financial inclusion, mm -hmm. we want to solve problems to access to finances, not just for, for the big players, but also smallholder players, the smallholder farmers, SMEs. So, Casper comes in as an, an access point, as a bridge to, uh, to, to, for that problem. Data protection compliance becomes a key concern for a private firm handling such massive data. The CBK Digital Credit Providers Regulation 2022 came in to try and induce some sanity into digital lending practice, which has been a thorn in the flesh of Kenyans. The regulations not only require the licensing of all digital lenders, but prohibits the sharing of customer information without the customer's consent. This will curtail the practice by digital lenders where they would share the customer's information with debt collecting agencies who would apply offensive methods in debt collection such as harassing the customers. The regulations prohibit digital lenders from using threats, violence, obscene or profane language against customers or their references or contacts for purposes of shaming them in the course of debt collection. 
it further prohibits digital lenders from accessing a customer's phone book or contacts list and sending them messages in the event of debt default. The CBK regulations serve as a bolster of the Data Protection Act of 2019, which introduced stringent standards for data protection in Kenya. The act prohibits collecting and sharing personal data from data subjects without their consent. Hefty fines are imposed on persons or entities that do not comply with the data protection provisions. Digital lenders have not been spared in the implementation hook of the act. Actually, we're using open source data. Mm -hmm. uh, we're using clim uh, climatic APIs, we're using social media data, mm -hmm. uh, we're using economic data, we're using market insights from all these open sources, and we are bringing it together. For example, when uh, the floods, um, and the flood epidemic was happening in Kenya, mm -hmm. hypothetically, most people would question or would, 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 would uh, do an assessment of how this, uh, these floods affected maybe their business. Mm -hmm. So with Casper, we can be able to actually utilize and explain directly how uh, the floods would even even affect your credit score. So Casper uh, allows uh, the fact that we're using so many data points that previously have not been used or maybe they have been underutilized by other credit scoring system. We, we are able to actually tailor make uh, financial products or we're able to tailor make financial services for these particular people. Mm -hmm. So um, Casper is very dynamic in such a way it changes uh, not only with the institution but also the people, the age group, the subs, uh, uh, different subsets, different age sets, people from different uh, demographics. It has the ability to cluster people and it also has the ability to predict if this is a financial uh, via, uh, this, is a, this is something viable, or if this is something feasible, or, or it's not. So we're able to uh, uh, give people, if um, let's say someone cannot, cannot access maybe um, um, a loan of 300000 to start a business, Casper mm -hmm. has the ability to tailor make that or to structure that loan to, um, uh, you know, to, to scheme it in a way that they can be able to utilize and actually pay that loan. Figures indicate that MSMEs contribute about over 40% of Kenya's GDP with higher employment numbers. This sector is still not well covered within the CRB framework. Likewise, this sector that also employs majority of Kenyans remains underserved financially due to security and collateral issues. By 2022, small businesses in Kenya were being charged between 0.2% to 0.8% more for credit by lenders due to the collateral and security question compared to large firms accessing the same financing. SMEs pay up to 14% compared to 13% what is paid by the corporates. This partly is due to the risk-based lending that was approved for at least nine commercial banks. We were keen to know how this innovation would help alleviate the challenge of heightened risk-based lending towards non-collateralized small and medium enterprises. Available figures indicate that Kenya has one of the most vibrant financial services sector in Africa. According to Kenya Fin Access Report 2022, the country has financial inclusion at 83% from a formal financial sector perspective and about 88% in the informal financial sector access is added to these numbers. The level of financial inclusion in Kenya is extremely high with only about 11% of Kenyans still locked out from the formal and informal financial services. A lot of these achievements in financial inclusion has to do with the mobile digital credit that has been transformative to individuals and small businesses. The depth of this financial inclusion in Kenya presents an opportunity. In 2013, there was a change in legislation to allow lenders and institutions to share both positive and negative data. Bureaus are now enablers with positive data within them, becoming reputation collateral for those individuals and that is used to deepen and give credit. Credit referencing remains a key point in determining the financial inclusion of a society and the fusion of artificial intelligence can increase the accuracy and effectiveness thereof. Casper's infused AI credit scoring could just be the panacea. And that's our startup of the week. Very well, Kenyans never stop amazing me. Let's now finish up with the tech tip of the week. Hi guys and welcome to this week's tech tip of the week. Today we shall be going over some keyboard shortcuts that you can use on your browser. If you'd like to close the tab that you're currently in, hold Ctrl plus W. If you'd like to highlight the link on the website, hold Ctrl plus L. If you'd like to open a new tab, 
hold control plus T. And if you accidentally close a tab, you can restore it by holding control shift plus T. That's it for this week. Very well, thank you so much for making time for us right here on NTV Takeover, the show that discusses all things technology. My name is Brian Jojo Tiano, signing out from Shanghai, China. Make tech live forever.